Okay, uh, this is the uh, Spectrum Analyzer plugin, and I thought we would try to power it up. I've been looking through the schematics uh, online, and so this thing normally went into a uh, uh, oscilloscope chassis, and the oscilloscope would have certain things that would be available to this, and then this would have certain things that would make available to the oscilloscope. So in particular, this thing would get its power from the chassis, and then it would output horizontal and vertical sinks and all that kind of stuff. So the only thing I really need to do is supply power to this thing, and it should operate on its own. Now, I know you can't see that, but I've looked at the schematic, and um, the connections to the mainframe are pretty limited. Um, the only voltages that this thing needs is a plus 15, a minus 12.6, and a plus 100. Now the plus 100, I'm not sure where that's used. I don't know if the YIG oscillator needs plus 100. I don't remember, but anyway, I thought at least the uh, display should light up if we apply power. So I was trying to figure out how to, uh, here I'll show you. I was trying to figure out how to make connections to the mainframe. So the mainframe uh, uses this big connector here. And on the schematic, it, it, it shows this connector and it shows all the places. And like I said, one of the pins is plus 15, one of the pins is minus 12.6, one of the pins is 100 volts. So I uh, was looking around and there's also in the back here, way in the back, you can just barely see that, but back here are a bunch of test points. And one of the test points is labeled 15, and one of, one of them is 12 and a half, and one of them is 100. So it looks like this connector here was also be able to use to run it on the test bench. So let's bring in uh, some clip leads. Uh, let's see if I can read these. They're, more, they're too small for me. Uh, where's one? Where's my magnifying glass? There we go. So plus 15 is that one. Minus 15 is, or minus 12.6. Yeah, minus 12.6 that way. And there's no, there's, I don't know if one of the test pins is ground or not, but I'm just gonna use the chassis as ground. So I'll put one of the clip leads on. Clip leads on the metal parts. And let's turn the power on. There we go, look at that. Thing lights up. Now let's look at the current draw. Um, so the minus 12 is at 0.4 amps and the 15 is at 0.6 amps, so it, it draws a healthy amount of current. But you would expect that from the vintage. So let's see if it does anything. Well, I mean, let's see if the buttons or switches or something or others don't do anything. Let me lower the camera here. Okay, so tuning, that changes. So it should go up to 15, oh, 1582. And it should go down to uh, 100 megahertz, or I mean, uh, 100 kilohertz. 0.1 megahertz. Could take us a while, it's 80. What megahertz? Yeah, that's 82 megahertz. Uh, and we go to the right to zero, and then we go negative. So there's an offset in there. Anyway, I think that's pretty typical of these old instruments. 
You don't exactly know where zero is. You don't exactly know where the frequencies are. And that's why there's these cow buttons and stuff. There's usually a comb generator in them. And I don't know, they're kind of, uh, they're kind of funny to use. I had ones very similar to this one. So there's a reference level. This is just the step attenuator. So that's just mechanical. There's the resolution, which doesn't do anything. It's just switches. Let's see, there's a sweep light. The green button is sweeping. Oh, okay. So that's good. So the green here, green here. Ah, I'm getting spam. Uh, let's see here. I guess that's about it. So I need to take a look at whether the uh, YIG oscillator can operate without that 100 volts. And we can take a look at some of the outputs. There's a first LO output. Um, and the first LO should be, ah, geez. Uh, the first LO should be, um, the YIG oscillator, I believe it should be the uh, two, two to three, three and a half uh, gig uh, two to three and a half gig um, LO. I'm sorry, my phone's still bugging me. Um, and then there's a Cal output, which I'm not quite sure what comes out of there. So the way this thing operates, we'll have to look at the block diagram, but it um, it takes the input, it mixes it with uh, two gigahertz, and then it mixes it down with, I think, seven, 1.7 gigahertz down around 20, something like 21 megahertz are the IF filters. And it runs through the, the two IF filters at 21 megahertz. Um, so, all right, I was just poking around before I went and grabbed the uh, block diagram, but uh, I found a bunch of test points and I uh, found this one cool test point right inside there. And it's giving me some ramps. So this thing's gonna output a ramp as it uh, sweeps. And there's a uh, knob here called uh, time per division. So that should set the sweep rate. And so when I change that, the sweep rate changes. I like it. So that's working. And then, uh, see there's a manual sweep. There you go. You can sweep it up and down. So sweep it back and forth. I don't know if you've used an analog spectrum analyzer, but that's the manual sweep. Here's, uh, yeah, I like it. So that's working. This thing might work. All right, uh, made a breakthrough here. So I have the spectrum analyzer hooked up. I found two test points. I showed you that test point already that had the ramps. And then uh, looking in the documentation, uh, this board in the back here that I'm using all those test probes on, they have the um, uh, power coming in. This 100 volts doesn't seem to do anything at all. I don't even know why they bother running it into the machine. I don't think it does anything. Anyway, um, there's this test point 1A. And test point 1 is the video signal, which is the output of a uh, spectrum analyzer. So if you have the sweep and you have the video, that's all you need for a spectrum analyzer. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a spectrum first. All right, so I have a um, antenna hooked up to this spectrum analyzer and you can see that's the FM broadcast band. So these are all the stations nearby. And so there's a bunch of them, then there's a gap, and then there's, a, then there's two more. So just kind of remember that pattern, okay? So we're gonna take this B and C, which is the antenna, and we're gonna take it over to the other spectrum analyzer. 
All right, so I'm going to take the BNC and I'm going to attach it to the input. All right, and I have it tuned for 100 megahertz. And I have the two leads. This one has the slope uh, that's the sweep information, and this is the vertical information. So this is X, this is Y. And then uh, I have that going into my Rigel. And uh, I have it in XY mode, and there it is. There's there's the spectrum analyzer sweep. Uh, you can see it in two different ways. This is the linear, this is a all in one. So this is the sweep, the X coming in, and the Y has the video information. And then uh, X versus Y gives you, uh, gives you the uh, info that you need. Let me, uh, let me move in. All right, I've killed the room lights so it looks a little better, but yeah, there we go. There's the spectrum analyzer suite. There's a bunch of stuff, and then there's a gap, and then there's two more. So it's, it's the FM band, okay? So if I remove the BNC, it all goes away, and I put the BNC back on, and it all comes back up. So this spectrum analyzer works. I can't believe it. This thing works, 40 bucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, I don't know how to make this full screen on a Rigel. I only know how to do this one, so I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to read my manual on my Rigel. I've never tried to do XY before. Um, do I have any other scopes? I think that's the only scope I have now. God, I've gone, I've gone through so many scopes. I've had so many scopes in my lifetime in this garage. <laughs> but I think I've kind of uh, whittled it down to this one right now. So, yeah, that's... Uh, that is pretty cool. Uh, let's see, we can, uh, yeah, we can make it bigger and change the offset here. Let's move, move it down. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I like it. So if I change the spread uh, on it so I can zoom in on, uh, I'm clicking on the span knob on the uh, spectrum analyzer. So uh, how many how many megahertz are we spanning so we can we can zoom in and we can see things I'm um, zooming out zooming out zooming out there's the whole FM band zooming out there's the FM band and then something else so this is the uh, FM band and below it that might be the aviation band uh, I'm not sure. Or the aviation band's just above it. Yeah, the aviation band's just above it. Yeah, I'm not sure what that lower stuff is there. Anyway, it's working. It is working. That is way cool.